Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? In this video I'm going to make a chessboard with two and a half inch squares made from bird's eye maple and morado. Morado is commonly known as Bolivian rosewood. And the board is going to have a three inch frame around the outside made from walnut. It's going to have a brass border that goes around the playing field. And I'm going to engrave initials with uh, and finish them with gold leaf. It sounds quite similar to a board that I made a year ago, except that the tools I'm going to use and the process I'm going to follow are quite different. So let's get started. This is the Bolivian rosewood that I found and it has really nice color and a beautiful green. With two and a half inch squares, that's going to result in a playing area that's 20 inches by 20 inches. So I need the wood to be at least 20 inches long, plus the amount of wood that's going to be lost every time I cut one of the squares. With a 1 8 inch blade, and I have eight squares, that's another inch that needs to be added. So I'm going to cut these to be 22 inches long. And then I'll run them through the jointer to flatten one side and one edge. With the jointed edge against the fence, I can cut it to the width that I need. And I want to get it to be exactly two and a half inches. A nice piece of bird's eye maple is getting harder and harder to find. Um, and this, this piece isn't the greatest, but it has some really nice figure in it. And I have another smaller piece as well. And with the table saw already set up for two and a half inches, I will run these pieces through the saw as well. Next, I'm gonna resaw them to be half the thickness of the board and that way I'll have enough chest squares for each side of the board. I'm not going to attempt to plane the bird's eye maple because I do not have a helical head in my planer and I don't think it will plane very smoothly. It will probably cause the figure pieces to tear out. So I'm going to use my, my drum sander as my planer to reduce it down to the appropriate thickness. You can see that the figure in the bird's eye maple is quite nice as well as the grain in the morado. And I'm going to arrange the pieces of Murado so that the grain is oriented in a nice fashion. And now it's time to glue it up. 
I'll start with some tape to hold everything in place, but I will clamp it at the end. But first, I want to put a weight on top to hold it down. After the glue has cured, I'll run it through the drum sander. And I really only need to sand one side at this point because I'm going to cut the pieces again into squares and I don't have a lot of material. So that's the reason I'm only sanding one side. And the side that I'm sanding is the side that will be glued down to the plywood. Now using my crosscut sled, I will square up the end. And it's actually easier to cut the squares using a fence rather than a crosscut sled so that I don't have to set up some kind of a stop block. And I only have about three quarters of an inch excess. And now I'm going to cut a square piece of plywood. It's three quarter inch plywood and I'm cutting it to be an inch larger than the playing surface so that I'll have a half inch of excess all around the perimeter of the playing area. And now it's time to glue up the first side of the chessboard and it's very important that the plywood be very clean before attempting to glue it up. It was actually the client who asked me to use Antonio Vivaldi's The Four Seasons as the background music for this video. And normally I would speed up this part of the video. Uh, this video probably should only be 25 to 30 minutes long. But in this case I had to fit the video to the music rather than fitting the music to the video. So you're going to have to sit through this entire glue up process. Uh, but feel free to fast forward through the video if you want. Now I want the squares to be centered on the plywood or centered as, as close as possible. So I've made these two by fours that have a half inch rabbit that I've cut along one edge and I've lined it with packing tape so that it will not stick to the glue. And these come in very handy. I've used them multiple times for making chess boards. They not only help to center the squares, but they give me something to clamp to. You need to have a fair amount of clamping pressure to make sure that there are no gaps between the strips of, of the squares. Uh, but if you put too much pressure, then the squares will bow up and away from the plywood. So it's important to add some weight to apply some downward force. <laughs> 
And I'm just going to use a fairly heavy toolbox for that. After the glue has cured, I want to sand this side to be flat before I glue on the other side. That way I will know that I have at least one flat side. Now it's time to cut the walnut frame and I want to have a three inch frame so I'm going to set it to be three and a quarter inches so that I have a little bit of excess that I can use in the milling process. And I'll cut these to be about 26 and a half inches long. And I'm numbering them in sequence so that I'll know how to assemble them so that I have continuous grain. And then I'll joint them and then run them through the planer. <laughs> 
Now that the chessboard is glued up, I'm going to run each of the edges on both sides through the table saw so that I can have a straight edge all the way around. And now I'll cut the frame pieces to width. And now using my dado blade, I'm going to cut a groove that's centered on one of the edges on all four pieces. And that's going to fit over the plywood. The, the plywood will serve as a tongue that fits into this groove. And then on the outside edge of the frame, I'm cutting a smaller dado that will be used to hold the edge banding that is made from curly maple. And I've got lots of thin pieces of curly maple sitting around my shop, which I save for projects like this. it on the table saw to be approximately the width that I need and then I'll finish it up on the drum sander to get it to be exactly the right width. And then after the glue is cured, I will trim up the excess curly maple on the table saw. 
I'm setting the height of the blade to be exactly the same height as the brass. And I actually want the blade to be just a tiny bit higher than the height of the brass because it's a lot easier to sand the wood than it is to sand the brass. So I want the wood to be just a little bit higher than the brass. And now I'm setting my fence to cut this tiny rabbit for the brass strip. I'm sanding the strips of brass so that they will adhere well to the epoxy. Now the process that I'm following this time is very different from the process that I followed the first time that I made a, a chessboard with a brass border. In the board that I made a year ago, I cut the miters for the frame pieces and then I cut individual pieces of brass and painstakingly tried to fit them in place. That's much more labor intensive and more error prone because it's easy to have a, a tiny little gap, which I did have in that board. In this case, I'm gluing the brass onto the board before I cut the miter. Brass is soft enough that it can be cut with the table saw along with the wood. And that way I will have no gaps and I will have perfect miters. And then I'll hold the brass in place with strips of tape. And now you can see it's really easy to cut the miters. And I made these cuts in multiple passes, making sure that I cut carefully to sneak up on the exact size that I needed. And now with the frame pieces clamped in place, they're not glued yet, but they're clamped in place so that the joints are tight. And I'm marking the locations of the mortises. And then I will cut the mortises with my router using a 3 8 inch bit. And I'll cut these tenons to be the length that I need. I'm using walnut for the tenons just because I have a lot of scrap pieces of walnut lying around that are offcuts from other projects. To glue this up, I'm using Tight Bond Extend because I want to have as long an open time as I can. Especially when gluing up with tenons, it takes a little bit more time. <laughs> 
and then I'll clamp everything in place. The frame was a little bit thicker than the board, so I ran everything through the drum sander to bring it all down to a uniform thickness. And then I sanded with a random orbital sander, paying very close attention to the scratch marks from the drum sander to make sure that I eliminated all of them. And then a bit of hand sanding to ease all of the corners. In the board that I made last year, I carved the initials by hand, which was a great experience, but it's much more efficient and much more accurate to do it with a CNC router. Just before carving these initials, the client emailed me and asked me if I could put his grandson's initials on the other side. So the grandson's name is Max, and so his initials are MHS, and the grandfather's initials, my client's initials, are RGS, and that's what's going on the other side. He also asked me to put my signature and the date on the bottom of the board, and so I'm carving that with the CNC as well, and then I will fill it with epoxy. Before applying the epoxy, I want to seal the wood grain to make it easier to sand the epoxy off. 
It's hard to see the signature before the finish goes on, so I'm applying a little bit of my DNA to make the signature visible. Before applying the gold leaf, it's important to have as smooth a surface as possible. So I'm hand sanding everything just to smooth down the, the rough edges of the engraving. It's hard to get it sanded perfectly in such a tight space, but I want to get it as good as I can. And the last bit of rough machinery work that I want to do before applying the gold leaf is to cut finger slots in the bottom of the board. So I'm using a 3 quarter inch router bit to do that. And I'm starting by routing at the back end of the finger slot, and then I'll pull the board out, start at the front, and then push forward. And the reason I'm doing that is to minimize the possibility of tear out at the back end. Now the first step in applying the gold leaf is to seal the wood. It's almost like priming before you paint. What I had intended to do before carving with a CNC router was to put blue tape on the frame so that it would mask off the outside areas of the letters. That would make it a lot easier to apply the sealer, but I forgot to do that so I'm, I'm just trying to paint within the lines. After the sealer dries, I will apply the sizing, and that's the adhesive that makes the gold leaf stick. And it takes about an hour for the sizing to dry. And then I'll apply the gold leaf with a brush and by just tapping gently. <laughs> 
found the gold leaf was tearing away a little bit as I was dabbing with the brush, so I folded it over and tapped on some more for any areas where there was still some, some exposed adhesive. and then I brushed off the excess. I let it sit for a while, and then I sanded off the excess. And then I want to polish the brass up a little bit. So I started with 320 grit sandpaper, moved to 400, then 600, then 800. And then I'm using this Merlon pad, which is the equivalent of 1500 grit sandpaper. Then I'm applying another coat of sanding sealer. And then I sprayed on multiple coats of pre-catalyzed lacquer with the light sanding in between each coat. And there's the finished product. And there's Ray and his grandson Max playing a game. So I gotta ask, would you make it? <laughs>